Hello guys, welcome back to SWAT Studs. Today we are going to look at how you can use render masks inside Arnold. So this is a continuation from the last tutorial where we talked about how to use render crops or crop regions in batch renders. So I have already explained how we are using render crop in batch render and why we need to use this in batch render and how it can be useful in the previous video itself. So if you haven't watched it, I'll put the link in the description. Please do watch it. And in this video, we'll be more focusing about using custom shapes like how we use render crops or crop region in the render view. We can use custom shapes inside the render view to render particular shapes as we need. And you can also use this for batch renders for rendering only particular regions of the render so that if you only need an update on a specific part of the render you can render it faster and efficiently so that you can save a lot of render time i can show you a situation where you will need this kind of use for a render mask if let's say you have a render like this this is the latest personal render i've done for another uh, upcoming tutorial so i thought it would be a really good example for you to show how it can be useful for you so let's say you have rendered this kind of a uh, numerous number of uh, lego heads in a single render and let's say you want to change a particular heads color into a different color and you want to render it separately the situation where it's not possible to render it in a single layer is one of the example would be if it is in a single instance so if i open this maya file you can see i have used marsh instancing to create this file so if i hide this instance you can see the whole geometry is a single instance so in this kind of situations you cannot isolate and render a single geometry from this group to a sing separate layer so in those kind of situations what you can use is you can create a region crop region render or create a particular render mask so that you can only render those particular area and then you can merge it on top of it and comp it using nuke so if it is a single frame you can use definitely crop region and merge it on top of it easily but the thing is when it comes to doing the same thing for a particular sequence of frames or if you want to use it inside batch render then these methods will come handy so let's see how you can use this inside maya and arnold so i have a simple scene from the last tutorial with the ball animation so here in nuke i have the previous render so let's say you later decided that you want the balls color to be something else let's say a red color so in that case since you have rendered it in a single layer you want to change or render only the ball area just like how we did with the crop region so here we are going to use a custom shape inside maya for doing that so let's first set the root format to be full hd or the resolution we have rendered this so this is half hd so i am going to set the resolution to be hd 720 and i am going to create a, a roto node here and i am going to go to the first um frame and i'm gonna create a roto shape so currently i'm using a custom shape so that you will get an idea like you can create any kind of shape with this even you can create a, a circle or ellipse that will also work fine what i am trying to create here is that i'm trying to include the shadows as well so, because if we change the color it will also affect the indirect on the floor so i want to include the changes on the floor as well with the render so that's why i'm just creating this wider render region so that we will not miss that area so now i'm going into the last frame and i'm moving the roto mask into the last frame so if i see 
I am roughly matching it to the moment of the board. So now what I want is I want the alpha channel of this uh, roto and I want to render this alpha channel as a mask and I'm going to use it inside Maya. So I'm going to render it as an RGBA and I'm going to put a right node and I'm going to layer path so I am rendering it as an EXR and I'm gonna render this so let's see Okay, we have a rough mask here. So now let's go back to Maya. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a plane. So what we are going to do is we are going to apply this mask onto the plane here. And we are going to use it as an opacity mask so that it will block the camera rays and won't render any of the parts where there is no alpha so i am going to keep the plane as close as to the camera so the principle here is that anything which is visible on the camera should come behind the plane the plane should always stand between all the objects which is we are planning to render and the camera and the second thing would be the plane should cover the camera frame completely so that the mask will work properly so i'm just adjusting the scale a bit so that it is positioned properly so if your camera is animated you will have to parent the plane with the camera so for that you can just middle mouse drag and drop the plane inside the camera so if you move the camera anywhere the plane will move with it and now the next thing would be that we'll assign a new shader for the plane so i'm going to assign an ai standard surface this we are only going to use it as a masking plane so we will not need any of the base or specular attributes actually we don't need anything except the opacity so since the shader doesn't have any color or specular the camera rays won't calculate anything because there is no indirect or light information to calculate because it's completely black so even if the frame is completely filled with a, a plane it won't affect any render time so the next thing would be to add the the render mask we have created into the plane so i'm gonna go to the mask and i'm gonna open it here and i'm gonna use image sequence and the next thing i'm going to create a projection so i am here using the default maya projection node here you can also use my ai projection uh, just use the same settings so i'm gonna add the file into the image uh, now you if you're wondering why i'm using projection because uh, we have created the mask according to the camera angle and the animation so in order for the mask's position to work properly you need to project it through the camera angle so that the roto which we have created will work as we expected so the projection type will be perspective and we have to link that to the render camera we have to change the fill type into match camera resolution now i'm going to connect the projection into the opacity now let's see what we are seeing 
when we render. Let's save this first. Okay. So now what we are seeing is the opposite of what we are expected. So uh, let me just remove the crop region which was there before. So now another problem we see here is that our mask should be inverted because when we are connecting the mask into the opacity, our render mask geometry is visible only here. So how the mask should work is that it should block all the light or the information from all the areas which is outside the mask we have created. So for that, either you can invert and re-render from here, the roto, like you can use an invert node. It will invert the roto and you can create another mask. Or easily you can add an AI range here and connect the projection to the input and change the output min from 0 to 1 and output max from 1 to 0 and connect this into the opacity that will invert our mask to our need. So now we have an animated mask which renders the ball in red color and will get the space we need and in this way, you can render the area we need in any custom shape you want to. So now one more thing that you need to do. If you see here on the alpha channel, you are getting full alpha still here. So now you'll be thinking you can use the same mask in the nuke and cut the render in the nuke itself before merging or use the same mask in the merge node for the masking but that may introduce some black edges on the edges of the mask or the render because there is black areas here inside the render so it's better you render out only areas which is inside the mask so for that what you can do is select the render mask geometry go to its polyplane shape and on the earn old enable the matte option now if you come and see the alpha channel it will only render the part where we have used the mask so in this way you can get only these parts rendered and that's all you need to create render masks in our node for maya so I hope this small quick tutorial was very useful for you and if you like this video give a thumbs up and comment your thoughts and doubts about it on the comment box and I will reply on it and please subscribe to my channel for lighting and look dev related contents in the future so that you will be notified as soon as it is published and share these tutorials with your friends who are also interested in lighting and look dev and i'll see you with another exciting tutorial pretty soon and till then this is swart signing off bye